You ready for this? We are the great experiment. The great experiment. What does that mean? I'm going to demonstrate to you in this video how many times entire civilizations have successfully built unbelievable societies with technology and things that we still to this day can't understand and then mysteriously disappeared. All right, what is that? Well, I'm going to have a little segment in here where I'm actually going to go through a few of them and there is a pattern with how they disappeared although nobody really has the ultimate answers. It is mysterious. Now I want to share something with you about us because we are no different. We are part of the great experiment. Our ending can be different. Are you ready for this? Let's go. to Landria on God on YouTube. I'm here to help you break through the fear. Break through it. You can live an amazing life, even with all the chaos. Why? We came for the chaos. We came for the scary. We came for the fear, the loss, the whatever it is we think exists in a limiting, self-limiting world. We get to experience that. This is the game. Play it well, my friend. So let's start out by saying that if you like my videos, please subscribe. That's what keeps us going. You know that, right? The other thing too is I've got free stuff for you guys and all of it, it's not just selling stuff. All of it is how you can transform your life into a higher frequency, whether it's what you do for a living or your mindset. I'm here to help you break through the fear, not eliminate it, but to use it in a powerful way. So I'm going to tell you some things right now that are super powerful. And if you open up your mind, just hang in there with me for a little bit, you might actually go into a space of empowerment and realize how amazing this era, this species right now, how pivotal it is. So let's start with the great experiment. I'm going to mention a few things that are pretty darn obvious that nobody really addresses. Those of you who do believe in life on other planets, and of course it's sort of, I don't know, limiting. No, it is very limiting to think that we're the only ones. I mean, that's like, eh. Let's go outside and say, okay, of course there are other species. Just because we can't see them doesn't mean they don't exist. And of course, we've heard many stories and seen more and more of these visitors coming here. Why? They're watching us. In fact, they're probably a part of who and what we are. We're probably all related on some level. I believe we are. I want to mention something about these visitors and the stories we hear. Whether they're true or made up, you can decide for yourself. However, there is a consistent pattern. Now, we talk about the greys and we talk about certain species that come from various planets, you know, the tall, blondes that wear the blue suits and the, the various the reptilians and all this other stuff. Have you ever noticed something about the various species that come from various planets? They all look alike, don't they? They look alike. We know who they are. We know exactly where they come from, supposedly, those who have seen them. Now, they can shift into different forms because they are of a more powerful energetic state. So they know how to manipulate energy and we think that that's, uh, you know, deceptive or crazy or whatever. Well, if somebody showed up and talked to you and they look like something that we consider scary, you'd freak out and pass out. I, I probably would. So they have the ability to appear the way that we can handle them. So a lot of that is going on. Now, when we go on the other side, when we die, uh, the same thing happens. We are slowly initiated into that world because we still hold this energy and these beliefs. Very careful, be very careful not to bring those over. The more you open up your mind, the more you release the material world and the false beliefs that this is what we are. These visitors 
look the same because they're coming from one space which propagated in that space, in that place, on that planet, wherever they come from. What's the difference between them and us? We look different. Now, if we are of one species, we can possibly look as varied as we do. You could say, well, 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 we were, you know, in different countries. Well, how did that happen? <laughs> if we're one species, how did we get separated in different countries? It, it makes absolutely no sense. So how can we have different eyes and colors and heights and body types and all kinds of things that are so very different from one another? And the very thing that causes us to battle one another, which is ridiculous. Why? Because we are a variation of a species that is a great experiment. A great experiment. And my theory, hear me out on this, is that this was a collaborative effort of others to see who is the fittest. In other words, which one of these species is going to work out better than the other to keep this planet alive. It's all good intentions. In other words, you just don't put rabbits here <laughs> or, or just mice. You put a bunch of different species and you see how they work out and work together. And that's what we are. We're the great experiment and those who collaborate and work together instead of destroying one another. I'm going to share with you in a moment the other civilizations that have mysteriously disappeared. There is a theme and it has to do with not only our climate but how we get along with one another. I believe the great experiment is that we have various species here of humans to see which one is going to survive the elements that Earth goes through too. We do have some influence on planet Earth, but she has her own evolution. There can be a lot of cataclysmic type of events on planet Earth, just like anything else that has its cycles. She does too. And part of that is her evolution and going off to something else. Well, she's going to be here a lot longer than we are. So here's my question to you. What do you think we are? If we have so many species that look so different, act completely different, have completely different beliefs, how did that come to be? So let's go back to my theory, and that is I believe that we've been planted here in certain forms for certain purposes. Now some of you will say that, you know, that we were here to mine for other terrestrials that came here that needed gold or whatever. I don't know about that, but I do know that there's a skip in the DNA. And if you've heard Greg Braden talk about this, this is real stuff. Science has a skip where we didn't evolve we all of a sudden just shifted into this much more advanced form of human. What is that? We are part of the great experiment, but what they cannot do is make our decisions for us, which means we're totally in control of our own survival and our collaboration and our community, and they are waiting to see who survives and what happens, and they are all watching us, all of them, because I think it's a collaborative effort of them. I think there are multiple neighbors who contributed to the different species here of human to see who's going to survive, who's going to be the fittest, who's going to take us into the new earth of peace and collaboration and community. How do we get that violence out of these human beings? What is it? How do we change that DNA? How do we shift things? Which I believe is the reason why we hear about people being abducted. I believe they're still working on the higher frequency, more peaceful form of a human being. So you'd say, well, why is this farmer being taken and this person being taken? Well, there is a reason, and I do believe that we have agreed to this in advance and knew that we were part of the great experiment. And so, of course, our memories have been erased so that we can live as human beings and not say, okay, uh, what year are they going to show up and let's give the DNA? No, no, no. It's just like what we do here, and we're so offended by these visitations, but the joke is, what do we do? Horrible things to animals, and trying things, and breeding them, and we've been doing this for centuries. Why is what they're doing so terrible? Because they're doing it to find the greatest, the fittest, the strongest. We are the great experiment. Now here's the deal. What are you personally going to do to make sure that we survive? It will be different than what I'm gonna share with you right now. All right, let's go over just a few. 
the ancestral Pueblans, advanced society, they disappeared in the late 13th century, climate change, drought, social upheaval. These are guesses, by the way, based on a few pieces of information. The Indus Valley civilization, that's present day Pakistan. Unbelievable urban planning, unbelievable sophistication. They disappeared. Theories include climate change, tectonic activity, invasion, the Mayan civilization, need we say more, pyramids, temples, crazy stuff. Where'd they go? Overpopulation, environmental degradation, warfare, Easter Islands. Well, we know how that is amazing. Where did those people go? Deforestation, resource depletion, societal collapse. I don't know. I'm not buying it other than one thing. They just didn't work out and kaput onto the next breed. So I asked AI this very important question. I kept digging deeper and deeper and deeper. Why is this a mystery? Why did these societies disappear? And the bottom line is no one really knows. No one knows because some of them are very advanced, more advanced than we are in some ways including the pyramid. So we know that there's a variety of species that were here that may have aided us in advancing and left. So that's the other part of this and helped us with tools and technology and things. And we still messed up. <laughs> we still screwed up. Not us personally, because you are the ultimate light of all things, but you is the illusion coming here. We have a chance to change things. I'm going to tell you what the critical key is to this. Critical key is oneness. If we do not come together as a unified species, it's the separation and the battle, the finger pointing, the taking sides that's going to get us back into trouble and we're going to be the next species that disappears. Now I'm going to have a video right after this. I'm going to talk about I believe that our future selves, because realities and time are just shiftable. They're all just existing at one time. I believe more advanced forms of us have gone past this limiting linear timeline that we're on and have the ability to change their future by coming back and helping us. And I think it's a cycle that keeps happening over and over to advance us, to advance us, and win the game. Bing, 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 bing. Next game, we won. That's how it works. Do you believe this? I believe it. You don't have to believe it. Sort of fun to think about it though, isn't it? We are the great experiment and we have a chance to be the one that survives this time. And it will only happen if you come together in peace and love and you put everything and everyone first. Why? Because what you put out comes back immediately. Somebody said that I don't get this high low frequency thing. <laughs> like low frequency people seem to be doing pretty good. I said, no, 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 no. They are just as powerful as we are. Yes, we all have equal power. How you use it is gonna determine your outcome and ours because we are a collective. So it's not, you know, more powerful, less powerful. It doesn't work that way. We're all equal. How are you using it? But I'm going to tell you one thing right now. And then we're going to go on to the next video in a couple days. One thing right now you need to know is that everything you create and put out exists immediately as part of your world and your reality. So when you go into low frequency and you're placing things out in here that are negative and separate and judgmental, that's what you live in. So when I talk about my father has many mansions and there are different floors, there's a penthouse that's beautiful and people, you know, they are cooperative and loving and accepting, but you have to be on that frequency to find that floor. And so it's not that you aren't welcome up there, but if you're in the basement fighting with people in the dark, separating and blaming, You've created and live in that frequency, in that world. That's how it works. So when you decide to cooperate and to go into community and love and oneness, you will go up different floors. Your frequency will go up and you receive that. So now you're living in a different world that's more abundant and loving and people are nice to you and all of a sudden things look very different. Why? It gets more beautiful as you go up there. Oh, there's windows. Oh my gosh, there's a world out there. All right, and it's never ending. There's no, there's no limit. There's no 10 dimensions. Now there's 11. Now there's, there's no limited dimensions. I mean, that's insane. There's no limit to anything. 
So if you're in the basement and you're separating, pointing fingers, and that's not how it is, somebody. Uh, so I've been watching for you for years. I'm going to unsubscribe because you don't believe in these various alien races. I said, Shh, what? hey, good luck with that. You're going to be unsubscribing to everybody. You're going to be by yourself. And that's the whole point. You cannot survive by yourself as an individual in the material world. We have to go in back into the oneness of which we are as the energy field. We have to simulate that here in the illusion as the physical world. We have to operate the same way. And therefore, we go into an expansive space where there is no limits because everyone contributes to the whole. Just like the puzzle piece. If one piece is missing, there's no total picture and that's you and every piece is different. So we have to come together and know that I have to contribute because then we are a whole and then we operate perfectly and beautifully. We have to find out how to do that and your whole purpose here is to come together as one because you will receive that and you will go into a reality that is so beautiful and so amazing. Things will show up. Your uh, relationships will improve. The new job will show up. A, a check for money that you never expected. Uh, your health will improve. It all goes into unity and oneness because even the body starts to work together. It's in harmony then. That's what dis-ease is, right? We're not working as one. There's conflict. And so those messages go into your body and things start to fight with one another. They go into imbalance. All right? This is your assignment. And it's going to be a tough one for some of you because you're so headstrong in your ego that this is how things are. Well, guess what? I'm going to meet you on the other side and you're going to say, wow, this is so way beyond what I imagined. Now, you guys have seen my book. I actually talk about this in my book. It'll blow your mind. You're going to probably have to read it a few times. Are you ready to go into the great experiment and be the species that takes us into a new world that actually not only survives, but goes beyond into something that we've never experienced here on this planet before? Are you ready for that? I'm counting on you because you're whole and perfect, strong and powerful, loving, harmonious, and happy blessings to you. Namaste.